Thromboangitis obliterans. Thromboangitis obliterans, also called Berger's disease, is a non-atherosclerotic, segmental, inflammatory disease that most commonly affects the small to medium-sized arteries and veins of the extremities, upper and lower, resulting in severe vascular insufficiency and gangrene of extremities. The condition is strongly associated with tobacco use. Etiology It is unknown etiology. The use of tobacco is essential for the initiation and progression of thromboangitis obliterans, most commonly seen in radial and tibial arteries. Berger's disease is associated with HLA-B5 and HLA-A9. Epidemiology First reported in 1908, by Berger, the disease is seen worldwide with an increased incidence in Asia and the Middle East. There is a particularly high incidence in Japan. Men are more commonly affected than women and the typical age of onset is 35 years. Pathogenesis The precise mechanism of the disease remains unclear. Trauma, cold, an injury to the digits or limbs can trigger an ischemic episode. Pathologically, the condition is distinguished from other forms of vasculitis by a highly cellular, inflammatory, intraluminal thrombus with relative sparing of the vessel wall and, more specifically, sparing of the internal elastic lamina. Three pathologic phases are described. In the acute phase, Inflammatory thrombi develop in the arteries and veins, typically of the distal extremities. The thrombus is occlusive and polymorphonuclear leukocytes, microabscesses, and multinucleated giant cells may be present, but there is no evidence of fibrinoid necrosis. Although the external elastic lamina may show some disruption, the internal elastic lamina is intact. The intermediate or subacute phase is characterized by progressive organization of the thrombus in the small to medium-sized arteries and veins. A prominent inflammatory infiltrate is still present within the thrombus but is less in the vessel wall. In the chronic phase, inflammation is no longer present and only organized thrombus and vascular fibrosis remain. The pathological appearance in the chronic phase is indistinguishable from all other types of occlusive arterial disease. An important point to be noted here is that although tobacco smoking is central to the initiation, continuation, and recurrence of disease, the specific role of smoking in the pathogenesis of thromboangitis is unknown. And in clinical manifestations, thromboangitis obliterans typically presents in young smokers less than 45 years of age. Early manifestations include cold-induced Raynaud's phenomenon, superficial thrombophlebitis, a migratory superficial thrombophlebitis can occur as a very early disease manifestation even before other symptoms and signs. Digital ischemia. Digital, that is toe or finger ischemia, is the most common presentation of thromboangitis obliterans. Vascular insufficiency can lead to excruciating pain even at rest due to neural involvement, skin ulcers, and gangrene is seen intermittent claudication, that is, leg pain induced by exercise that is relieved on rest. Joint complaints. In minority of patients, joint complaints may be the first indication of clinical disease. Physical examination. All patients should have a thorough history and physical, including a detailed vascular examination. The extremities should be inspected for superficial venous nodules and cords. The hands and feet examined for evidence of ischemia. Neurologic examination may document peripheral nerve involvement with sensory abnormalities in up to 70% of patients. 
For patients with lower extremity signs and symptoms, an ankle brachial index should be performed. An ankle brachial index is calculated by dividing the systolic blood pressure of the ankle by the systolic blood pressure of the arm. This index provides a measure of the severity of the disease. If this ratio is less than 0.9, it may mean that the patient has peripheral artery disease in the blood vessels in his or her legs. Similarly, a wrist brachial index can be performed in the upper extremity. A wrist brachial index is calculated by dividing the highest wrist pressure from each limb by the highest brachial pressure. A wrist brachial index of less than 0.7 is indicative of arterial occlusive disease. An Allen test should also be performed. In the Allen test, the patient is instructed to make a fist which will empty the blood from the hand and fingers. The examiner's thumbs are then pressed down across the thenar and hypothenar eminences to the wrist to occlude the radial and ulnar arteries. The patient then opens the hand, making sure not to overextend the fingers. The pressure on the ulnar artery is then released while the radial artery is still compressed. The hand does not fill with blood, indicating occlusion of the ulnar artery distal to the wrist. Abnormal test result. If there is prompt return of color to the hand, indicating a normal test result, the test is repeated, except this time pressure on the radial artery is released while the ulnar artery remains compressed. A positive Allen test at the wrist in a young smoker with lower extremity digital ischemia is suggestive of thromboangitis obliterans. Diagnosis Lab tests There are no specific laboratory tests to diagnose thromboangitis obliterans. Clinical criteria A clinical diagnosis can be established with the following commonly used criteria. Age less than 45 years current or recent history of tobacco use, distal extremity ischemia, objectively noted on vascular testing, typical arteriographic findings of thromboangitis obliterans, exclusion of autoimmune disease, thrombophilia, diabetes, and proximal embolic sources. Biopsy. Biopsy is rarely needed but is the only means to establish a definitive diagnosis. The angiogram shows multiple occlusions of the digital arteries with collateralization, corkscrew collaterals, around the areas of occlusion, treatment, medical management. Smoking cessation is the only definitive therapy for patients diagnosed with thromboangitis obliterans. Although a number of other therapies have been investigated, these should be considered palliative. Intravenous prostaglandins. Iloprost is a prostaglandin analog used to manage pain associated with thromboangitis obliterans. Intravenous iloprost is more effective than oral formulation. Phosphodiesterase inhibitors. Silostazole, a phosphodiesterase type 3 inhibitor with vasodilator properties, may become useful in the management of thromboangitis obliterans. Silostazole is often used in the treatment of atherosclerotic peripheral artery disease. Calcium channel blockers. Calcium channel blockers are frequently used to manage vasospasm associated with Raynaud phenomenon. When significant vasospasm is present in patients with thromboangitis obliterans, calcium channel blocking agents such as nifedipin, nicardipin, and amlodipin may be similarly used.